Today, let's look at the question, why is Iceland so warm? Okay, <laughs> fair enough. There's probably no one asking why Iceland is so warm, <laughs> because it's not. But it's also not as cold as people often think. Let's take a look at why that is. Iceland hugs the Arctic Circle and sits in a band roughly between 63.5 to 65.5 degrees latitude, with Reykjavik, the northernmost capital in the world, at basically 64 degrees latitude. Um, based on location alone, it's tempting to assume that Reykjavik shares a climate with other cities and towns, coastal cities and towns especially, around the globe in the same band. But that's not the case. Let's look at some examples. A little bit to the west of Reykjavik is Nuuk, the capital of Greenland. Uh, during the coldest month, the average daily lows in Nuuk are minus 10 degrees Celsius. If we go to the east, follow the same band, we'll come eventually to Arkhangelsk in Russia, a sizable city in Russia, where during the coldest part of, of the year, the average daily low is minus 15 degrees Celsius. And on the opposite side of the globe, we, well, we can hone in on Anchorage in Alaska, which is actually a little bit south of Reykjavik, I think at 61 degrees. In Alaska or in Anchorage, the average daily low during the coldest month is minus 12 degrees Celsius. So these seem to fall between minus 10 to nine, minus 15 degrees Celsius, even for coastal cities. Inland, we're looking at a much, much colder climate, of course. Reykjavik, compared to these numbers, is practically tropical. Because in our coldest month, January, the average daily low just barely reaches minus 2 degrees Celsius. So, no, Iceland, of course, is not warm. It's far from being hot or warm in the summers, but it's also not that extremely cold in winters. We have a very mild climate up here in the north. Why is that? The Gulf Stream, an extremely important ocean current for Iceland, pushes warm waters out of the Bay of Mexico into the Atlantic Ocean. There, that warm water is picked up by the North Atlantic Drift and floats northwards uh, towards the, the uh, western coast of continental Europe. It's picked up again by the Irminger Current, which pushes it again to the west across the Atlantic, where it ends up on the southern shores of Iceland significantly warming the oceans around the country and in turn the, uh, the climate. As that warm water comes up towards Iceland, it actually collides with colder currents coming down from the Arctic and that creates that perfect breeding ground for, for fish, contributing to the great fishing around Iceland, which has through the centuries formed the economic backbone of, of the country. And on a side note, something similar is happening above the waterline where you have warmer, so to speak, weather systems coming up the coast of, of North America, colliding around Iceland with colder systems being pushed down from the Arctic. And that's the reason why we have such volatile and unpredictable weather here in Iceland. It may not be extremely cold here, but it's always windy. So this whole deal with the Gulf Stream creates a unique uh, challenge, climate, climate challenge for Iceland if we look at the global warming scenario. I guess every country has their own kind of crisis to look forward to when it comes to global warming. Um, for Iceland, this means that although we are like everybody else seeing a, a you know, steady rise in temperatures and have been seeing for the past years and decades, I mean, for me, for instance, it's, it's obvious that the temperatures in summertime have, have risen a few degrees here, and we're also seeing much milder uh, winters. I mean, pretty much gone are the winter wonderland months on months on end during, during winter when I was a, was a kid. Now we just have these boring, wet rainstorm winters for the most part here in the south of Iceland. Uh, this all might be a bit temporary though, because with continued global warming, uh, we are seeing an exponential rise in, the, rise in the rate at which polar ice is melting. And what that will mean to this entire sensitive system of currents is that the added influx of cold water, the added pressure of cold water flowing down from the Arctic is eventually going to push those warmer currents away from Iceland and again significantly cool the climate here. So it's likely if those things happen that we will see temperatures here 
drop down to the temperatures we saw in, in, in other parts in that, that global band, which additionally, of course, will spell disaster for our fishing industry because those prime conditions for fish will absolutely evaporate, evaporate or at least move away from Iceland. So in conclusion, um, Iceland may not be that cold yet. <laughs>